See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I also need a bathroom break. <laughs> All right, you do that. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Are you admiring Glenn's collection that's hanging on this wall behind him? Oh, I was just continuing the the podcast without you guys here, and then I started doing it. I can just comment on what I see, and I got to Glenn, and then you're back. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, no worries. <laughs> we already talked about the the nice tuft rug behind you there. So it feels oh. rather professional, just leaning back and seeing the logo <laughs> at this distance. It actually looks Jesus Christ! It actually looks good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to bring a lot of stuff uh, with you, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything to declare? Uh, no. Do you mind us looking in your back? What's this? <laughs> oh, it's my tufted rug. <laughs> and that's Emotional. all you're traveling with? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where are you taking it? <laughs> Nowhere, it's nailed to the wall. <laughs> Six inch nails. No, not quite, but <laughs> yeah. I actually I realized I have the tools for making a rug like that, but without the tufting gun. But it is my grandmother had this uh, specialized tools and you can get the yarn pre chopped. So you actually just buy bales of uh, chopped yarn and the c- colors you need and you just manually just loop it through yeah. and hook it manually and it's very labor intensive but I have a few rugs that my uh, grandmother made and of course the, the, the flower portraits that were uh, the rage in the 40s and the 50s <laughs> might not I mean fit the aesthetics uh, in our living room but the craftsmanship is like, yeah, I, I'm going to hang on to those until it's my kid's problem. But <laughs> <laughs> I do have the tools, yeah. but I don't think I have the patience of going uh, all manual on a tufting rug. How long would it m- take to make one manually like KJ's number one crude mistakes rug? I mean, That's the, the one who could answer that has been dead for 30 years. So, um, <laughs> but... I mean, weeks, probably, yeah. like uh, full days. I mean, that's yeah. what what she did. So uh, she probably had like eight, ten hour days. But yeah, it would probably take weeks before she had uh, a result. Gosh. And she made pillowcases and wh- whatever fabric. Uh, and of course, that would be awesome today if she were alive, because then I would commission like... Uh, can you make me a jacket out of tufting? Because it's basically whatever you can shape that backing <laughs> net into, you can make a tufting version of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> My grandma uh, was heavily into knitting and I've never seen anybody knit so quickly. She could, you know, knock out a kid's jumper in an afternoon. No problem. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic at it. Yeah, my mother-in-law as well was like that. I mean, if she had to memorize and or look at a new pattern, it went a bit slower. But of course, to me, it was still like at the speed where you almost couldn't see her fingers because they were a blur. Yeah. But when it comes to socks or sweaters, I mean, it was on autopilot. So if she was watching television, she was just knitting without even watching. And it's like, it's a pair of socks per episode of uh, (laughs) whatever she was watching. And twice a year uh, at a family gathering or something, she Mm -hmm. just brought a big bag of the socks and just laid them out on the table and here, have at it. So I, I think I have woolen socks for the rest of my life. (laughs) <laughs> which is nice but, I mean I live in a cold country so they sound nice and itchy well surprisingly not that itchy but that is very much up to what kind of yarn you're using oh, yeah okay there's a big difference between wool and wool but that being said I mean knitting your own sweater if you want one that doesn't itch with proper wool that's not cheaper than buying one 
No, no, no. <laughs> Well, you 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 shouldn't be knitting if you're doing it for to save money, because you won't. Did your grandma into any particular crafts, KJ? Well, I uh, wouldn't know. I mean, both of them died when I was about nine, eight or nine oh, years okay. old, and one was pretty old, or, or one was very old, and the other was. <laughs> Yeah, the mind was gone a couple of years before that. Uh, so, okay. So, yeah. Um, but I think they probably, I mean, we have some uh, embroidered uh, pillowcases and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I think yeah. they did, like everyone did back in the days. But, because for some reason you wanted uh, nice monograms of, so you know whose pillowcase <laughs> that was. I don't really see why, but yeah. <laughs> That's the fun thing, and that that is the one thing I would have discussed with my grandparents on both my parents' side, because uh, a lot of them passed away relatively early while, while I was young, and on my father's side, I didn't know my grandfather as well, but he ran a contracting firm with a friend, and they lived at the farm, and the same did my grandparents on my mother's side, and I mean, they did make stuff, but it was out of necessity. I mean, they had farm animals, so they, of course, uh, made everything they could from that. And they had a workshop in the barn, but that was for repairing fishing nets or broken farm equipment. So, I mean, you could say they, they were makers, but they didn't go in there and think... What should I make today? No. No, oh, I should <laughs> fix this goddamn thing because we have to do that before the season turns and so on. So I don't they really didn't have the time for occupational making and it's it would have been nice having that discussion with them like what would you do with your skill set if you didn't have to? I still have a, a clogging iron uh, from my grandfather. Uh, it's in my workshop uh, for making wooden clogs. And at some point, I would have liked to made my own just to have used his old tools. But of course, he's gone, so I have no one to ask. So of course, I could go to YouTube and see how the Dutch do it. But that wouldn't be the same. But yeah. Is the iron the thing that you form the shoe around? or No, it's it's like a chisel, but it is uh, curved like an S and sharp on both oh, okay. edges. So you just use it to carve out the inside of a, of a shoe, basically. So uh, oh, okay. it's a very specialized tool for getting into the toe part to carve out the, the wood that you can't reach with regular chisels. Right. Ooh. I've not seen anybody make a pair of clogs on YouTube. On I the have. table saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there a jig for that? <laughs> Yeah, most likely. Uh, I've seen I've, I've seen a video. How do they do it? Uh, how they mass uh, produce wooden clogs for the yeah. tourist industry? And yeah, it's just a, a more boring version of uh, <laughs> of turning. <laughs> yeah, there I said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I want the lathe. So yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. shoot. <laughs> All right, electric clogs. It is then. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Well, I I just. I, I just forgot. I made clogs or sandals, the the self turning ones. That so, was yeah. Yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> that that being said, that is one of the ideas I'm gonna revisit. But instead of the self turning <laughs> shoes, which were amazing, totally useless, of course. But if I could, instead of a doormat, you have a, a turntable that when you just uh, you step onto there, kick off your shoes, and then. When you step off again, it registers, all right, a person has gotten off, so he has taken his shoes off, and then you just turn the turntable 180 degrees. So then you can do it with any shoes. Yeah. And, and it's twofold as well, isn't it, for unwanted guests. They step on the door, <laughs> that turns them around and faces them off in, in the direction they just came from. And, and, and I see that now that I need to go to Ikea and buy uh, at least four or five of these uh, p- pizza turntables. Yeah, a lazy Susan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> rated for two hundred kilos. <laughs> oh, that'd be so great! Stand on the door, mate. Rotates you around, and then a a mannequin foot comes out and kicks you up the arse just to make sure you can't go in. <laughs> oh, that works! It's so cool. 
people just coming there and trying to press the button and it just turns around and there's a voice like, nope. <laughs> Computer says no. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. I, I've actually seen you, you now get... Uh, like a, a HAL computer doorbell. So like you just turn her on and no, I can't let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> just have them screen doors closing around the, the button <laughs> so they can't press it. <laughs> uh, Was it Furs that did a, either a water gun or a uh, a Nerf gun that popped out of a planter? For people that yeah, I think yeah. It was some, some airsoft or something like that. Yeah, yeah to shoot. That's got to be a cool project. I quite fancy that one. Yeah, but didn't he also make a doorbell with a gun that when you press the button, it fired a gun into a metal bowl or something and made a whole lot of racket? Oh, I don't know. I don't remember that one. That being said, we when we bought this house, they had a, an old, not functioning doorbell system. And the actual bell... I have disassembled because it has a very distinctive 70s look to it. And by the looks of it, it works. So I'm, I'm going to save it for the day I can refurbish it. But I did leave all the wiring for the doorbell because um, you had a doorbell just both upstairs and downstairs. And they all were, went to separate uh, cable paths up to the old fuse cabinet who was in the attic and then it had a six volt stationary power supply from there. So all the wiring are there. So I just left them because then I can use that to pull new wiring. And of course today doorbells are, I mean, they are wireless. So you, you don't need that, but I'm still thinking I should do something for a gag with that. And I, the, the wires are already there. So I just need to find out what I should do with it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we uh, unhooked our doorbell as well and used the one that's wireless, but that kept, kept acting up so much. So I actually switched back to the old one and just put in a new transformer uh, because that one yeah. actually works all the time <laughs> and not just some of the time because a doorbell that works seldom is not really good. <laughs> We've no. got the um, ring doorbell, which works absolutely fantastic as long as you've got your phone with you. But if you're anywhere in the house that hasn't got your phone and you can't hear your phone, then you can't hear the doorbell. Ah, <laughs> that's a bit of a flaw in that system. Yeah, I mean, if I... you have, have your phone glued to your hand, that works perfectly. <laughs> I've seen a combined system, and I found one that doesn't need a subscription. Um, and I was thinking here, they had it on, uh, I think it was Black Friday sale, and I almost bought it because they have a bundle with two and. Of course, with the camera and the motion sensor as well, and the location of our doorbells, it means that it will show us anything in front of our main door, and the other doorbell is beside my garage, so that will act as a surveillance camera for the garage, but it will also notify us when anyone, if it is a delivery driver or anything driving into our driveway, he will be spotted by that camera. Yeah. Um but yeah, I haven't gotten around to it. And it is the thing with, uh, do you want to use the wireless function? Then they are on battery and they will run out and you have to remember to change them. And yeah, there is probably in two years, it's going to be a software update or the company goes bankrupt. And if something fails, <laughs> then you have a system that doesn't work. Yeah, so, I've yeah. got the, um, we've got the ring doorbell. We've also got the um, ring spotlight camera, which I hardwired into the mains. <laughs> And that thing's absolutely fantastic. I mean, the night it's got night vision on it. It's got lights on it. It's got an alarm. You can shout at people over it and hear people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do have my <laughs> I do have my recorder based uh, alarm clock, and yeah. it, I got around to thinking I could make that a bit more flatter, and it would fit above the door in our entrance. I could actually hardwire these original <laughs> switches to just <laughs> honk a recorder. But uh, g given the the reaction my wife had to the alarm clock, I, I haven't pitched the idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, it, it's the uh, it's the chance of becoming that recorder guy, so <laughs> yeah. trying to not niche down <laughs> in specific uh, genres. 
Uh, I actually had a number one crude mistake uh, Ooh. Uh, the last week. There was a lot of times when we had <laughs> one of those. Uh, when I re- recorded the intro for the Rose Cage video, I had uh, my my camera uh, uh, far with away, so then I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to record it using my phone, more or less like a microphone, holding yeah. it up like a dictaphone. So I did that a couple of times. And, um, that's pretty good. And then I realized that the, the, the phone was actually... Uh, connected to my bluetooth headset i was <laughs> around my <laughs> neck so i mean it was worse than bad audio quality <laughs> <than> that recording. <laughs> so I was like, oh damn it and i had to do it like a 15th time or something oh, like that no. and felt... <laughs> i did a i've had a couple of mistakes on the uh the storage um challenge project i um painted just the inside of the drawer and I did it before I assembled it. So I only had to paint one side and then assembled it with one painted side facing the out- outwards, which slowed me down. And then um, I've also mounted the drill on it. And so I did the mountings and realized I got the piece of wood the wrong way around. So if I'd actually mounted it on the way I had it, the drill would be facing sideways to the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> so the top is now painted as well because I had to fill the holes. <laughs> Just stupid stuff, you know. When you you're just rushing and you're a bit tired, yeah. You just grow up. You just think you're stupid old sod. <laughs> just think about things for a second longer. Yeah, <laughs> I did a number one crude mistake as well. Oh, uh, yeah, I got one as well. Oh, you're both wearing plasters, yeah. amateurs. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh... you got electrical tape, or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Piece of kitchen roll until it stops bleeding. Then you well, got to I, go. I, start, I started with kitchen roll because yeah. bit of sawdust and glue. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not made of oak. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, I, I actually combined those, so I had I had the machine <laughs> fixing the sawdust directly after cutting me because uh, I was, uh, well, famously, I was just gonna, ah, and then yeah. uh, my CNC uh, bit my finger. And uh, a compression bit at the ten thousand RPM. It, it really takes flesh off your finger. Uh, and I got <laughs> I got really lucky. I like I just all right. You're just shutting down the shop for today and just sit outside and relax because you got extremely lucky. <laughs> it's just a, a little bit of a neck, and it's just like a, yeah, a band aid, and that's it. But yeah, could have gone <laughs> like yeah, that could have gone. Room, sewing your finger back on and. It might not have been something left to sew on, actually, to be fair. So, yeah. Can you imagine if they sewed it on, but the wrong way around? So it bent the other way. <laughs> you got the worst doctor in the house. Yeah, yeah but then again. Oh, maybe just, just a doctor maybe... with a sense of humor. <laughs> Would that be a benefit? I mean, is there something I, I could do then that I could not now? If it bent the other way? <laughs> I mean, the other way would be better than 90 degrees, I think. I love that we're all just looking at having just trying to figure this out. like, hello. <laughs> hello. Would it be Man, easier picking your nose? <laughs> yeah, mm. maybe. Mm. Yeah, you can get some better angles in. You can better <laughs> utilize your nail. Yeah, that's us. <laughs> of course, I made the pencil holder for Chloe's challenge, and I decided not oh, to draw that in, in CAD. Yeah. So I thought I should do this proper manually and of course i also thought i will only post this on instagram as well so i filmed with my phone so it's like that's been a year since i did last time so the audio is bad audio at best um but in the meantime and in the background i have designed the um, the tabletop for the side table and uh, i chucked that uh, very nice board of oak into my cnc press play and it went through it drilled the holes as it should and then it started making a recessed groove that was going to be 10 millimeter deep so it took the first layer off five millimeter everything worked perfectly then it started again and like this looks a bit deeper than the holes it drilled so i just paused it and yeah something is wrong here it's taking one too deep a step but it's too late now. So, okay, I'll, I'll let him finish it. And this is going to be the design. And it worked for a couple of hours. 
And of course, it's in the same time, I also was going to brush away some dust doing a, a, a dumb, uh, and then of course, touch the drill bit as well as it was rotating. So that's where I got the nick in my finger. And when it was finished, I saw some really deep grooves. So it's actually, he had, it has done some movement in the set axis that wasn't programmed. So it, it totally ruined the piece. So, um, I could save the outer part of the piece, which is going to be the, the legs for the table, but it completely ruined a, a 70 euro uh, piece of uh, yeah. very nice oak. <sighs> and of course, I sent, uh, I haven't gotten a reply yet. I sent a customer uh, case to the uh, the company who made it like, can you evaluate the file? I have checked. Everything should be right. I don't understand why my CNC did this, but it ruined uh, a quite expensive piece of oak. And before I try to do that on the second piece, I would like to have an evaluation if you can see any fault in the in the file. So I'm really <laughs> looking forward to them <laughs> replying. There, there was no mechanical problem that you saw well i did check because it, or... if the if the drill bit were loose or something but it i mean it it finished off on the right level so if something was loose or it it moved then it it wouldn't fix itself and go back to its uh, zero state so yeah there, there is something i of course i went in and looked at my my file in um uh, CAD, I run the simulation, nothing indications there. So, could it be um, anything with with the fact that it's oak? You normally do a lot, you do a lot of plywood, don't you, on your CNC? Could it be the fact that it's oak and it's just sort of digging into the harder wood a little bit more and it's pulling it down? And, I thought and about that as well, and I also yeah. went with a beefier bit this time to just yeah. to short down the time, but. I have accidentally moved it in the x-axis without moving it. And then, of course, he stops automatically. But that uh, ruins the the zeroing out of the axis. And that should be the same here. If the bit pulled it down a bit, it should uh, ruin the zeroing of the yeah. set axis. But no that went uh, back to normal right. as well so i have no good explanation and i i'm hoping that um they could find something and it i had an incident right after i bought it as well i just pressed play and it just went to a specific point that wasn't even in the program and it just drilled down in its own uh, bed plate <laughs> and of course <laughs> The way, <laughs> the way they have designed this is there is a lot of electronics under the bed plate. So it was lucky that we drilled in a place where there wasn't an electronics because this machine is very capable of giving itself a lobotomy if it just hits the right place. <laughs> and they did not find anything that as well. I sent over the files and everything and it says, all right, it might have been a fluke or something. And I thought, all right, I do have... At that point, I used my portable vacuum cleaner, the Bosch one with the battery, and it creates a lot of static. So I was thinking, all right, did it generate enough static that that knocked out a sensor or some disturbance or something to the clo too close to the signal cable from the computer? To but no, they they could not find a reason for that. So of course, I reference back to that case as well because it's it's kind of annoying if you have have it doing something you don't know why. Yeah. yeah, I would be. I mean, that's a. If I had a robot in the workshop, I would constantly. <laughs> I wouldn't trust it, because I would expect something like this to happen every time. Yeah, <laughs> that would absolutely do my head in because um, I would instantly assume it was my fault. At least you've got the confidence and the know-how to say, "No, I don't think I've done anything wrong here. It's the machine." Well, I I might yeah. have done something yeah. wrong, but then I've done something I do not understand, and yeah. Of course, that's a that's a good thing of with this company. They actually have service personnel, and they do follow up on support, and they actually take your files and evaluate and do simulations and and check the code and everything. So they do actually do a thorough job. Except they did not find anything wrong the last time, and that's annoying. If they found something wrong, you could fix it, but don't finding the fault that's really annoying it's like with your car i mean it, it yeah. works when it's in the shop but uh, once you get out to the highway then uh, 
something happens and nope. <laughs> yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, going back to the piece of oak, is it salvageable? Could you could you take out you know an even amount all the way? around the damaged part and then inlay another piece of oak into it or something. <laughs> I did think about that. I also thought, should I uh, do a river table because I could fill the gouged <laughs> out parts, but no, not even I should sing solo. But um, what I do is the the outer parts where I have drilled the mounting holes, I could actually just chop those off and I have in the table saw and I just flip them around and then I can use those holes to attach them under um, the metal table legs so yeah. I got to salvage the parts but the middle section the widest part is totally ruined so uh, I'm now gonna have two very small oak foots under that table um, <laughs> at the value of uh, 70 euros <laughs> so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's gonna be an expensive table so uh, it yeah. better be uh and that's the worst thing I did. I didn't film any of it, so uh, I didn't even didn't even get any content out of it. <laughs> no, oh. I've, I've stopped filming the. I mean, I stopped rigging up camera equipment to film the CNC for just having two seconds of B roll. I mean, I can just go to an old video and pick that up and just splice it in there because a CNC is a CNC. That's nothing interesting there. Yeah, <laughs> unless it fails. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it would be nice to have the video and then ship that over to them as well. But uh, I did film the end results and I've saved the, all the original uh, files and so on. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. You would want like a security camera on the CNC that you can tell it, OK, <laughs> save the last 12 hours of footage <laughs> if it was interesting or otherwise just write it over. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a laser, a, a camera that goes with my laser and runs with the software, the Lightburn software. So, yeah, you could probably get something similar for your CNC, couldn't you? Yeah, most likely. Yeah. So, with that camera, do you does it have a function like the auto, like focusing or something, or is it, it just a film? Yeah. You can film on it, and you can also use it for auto focusing, and it's it's not bad for the auto focusing positioning thing. But the problem is if you touch it, if you nudge it, if you look at it the wrong way, then it goes out of sync and you have to go through quite the performance to set it up again. So I set it up once, made a video about it, and uh, <laughs> it's never been on since. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's also why I, I bought a, a plug-and-play CNC because I've seen those people who, you can save some money about build them yourself, but I mean, the time and skill you need and to set it, together in such a point that it actually has good tolerances and then if anything goes wrong you can't yeah. turn to anyone because yeah you got the parts in 50 plastic bags and um yeah. manual written in poorly chinese english and <laughs> you're the one who put it together so you got nowhere to turn yeah yeah if ever you've got two to three hours spare you should check out new yorkshire workshops homemade cnc that process because that is a a, a very good CNC. I think that's better than anything you could buy. Yeah. Very, very industrial and very strong. And he's a very clever guy. <laughs> With a lot of time, it sounds. Yeah. And money. Always just, always just puts out a really long video and they always do really well as well, KJ. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even speak or anything in them. Hmm. Yeah, so that's got his own niche nailed there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, people, people seem to like long videos. So, yeah. Maybe I should just try and <laughs> shut up as well. And <laughs> see <if I> <laughs> that, that's one of the things that I've, I've, I've discovered now that uh, when I just leave the camera rolling and I'm talking to myself, I, I don't realize it, but there is a, a train of thoughts there. And then I sit down in the edit and then oh, it's like, one and a half hours of me just staring onto a piece of wood while I contemplate how should I do it. And then <laughs> when you cut down the video, the audio track doesn't make sense anymore because I had the point here and it referenced off something I talked about a half an hour ago. So it's like, all right, um, I just have to turn the volume all the way down and put some music in. And then, of course, <laughs> people go hellwire and uh, start talking about purgatory and uh, hell and whatnot. So, yeah, you can never win. <laughs> you really can't. 
Yeah, let's see yeah. if I get any complaints on the music yeah. on this one. Yeah. No, the AI generated music that I made myself <laughs> instead. Oh, I forgot cool. about that. I, I needed a and a, a bottle of wine, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go down that <laughs> rabbit hole. And uh... so the music on the table video was AI generated, was it, KJ? Yes. Oh, yes. awesome! I didn't even reflect on it, but no. I, I, I I mean the the examples you showed us earlier. I mean. I, <laughs> I would never expect so. Well, so it was. It worked really yeah. well. I just gave it some prompts and two. I mean, you get two. Uh, when you give the prompt, you get two versions, and then you pick your favorite and tell it, extend that one. Okay, and then you get two more versions. Uh, so it's one and two. Yeah. Okay, then it's two point one and two point two, and then okay, go with this and <laughs> two point two point one, and then you continue <laughs> to extend, extend until you're until you're happy oh, with cool. it. <laughs> so that worked. It worked great. Yeah. But I mean, I have got complaints about my, uh, because in the early days I used a lot of 8-bit uh, sounding music, <laughs> like an old computer game, and some people did not like that. Uh, so. Well, I, did, I had a comment, they don't like, str- one guy didn't like the strumstick music either this this week or last week. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> who comments about music? I mean, oh, yeah. just turn the volume down, how hard can it be? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a really annoying piece of music before I like if the video is interesting I'm still gonna watch it but there is I mean this isn't the first time someone has commented uh, on a video where it's like uh, I would much rather prefer just uh, hearing the workshop noises and the uh, banging of tools than yeah. the crappy music as like yes of course that is your opinion but <laughs> Well, this is how I made the video. You you can't turn yeah. the volume down, or there is other yeah. videos around you can watch. Just remember to like and subscribe before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's such a hassle when you leave the workshop sounds in. I, I've done it in the last couple of videos because I really hate it when you just get an angle grinder in the face sound wise. So I, I mean, yeah. I, I sit and, and turn down so you get a reasonable sound level on everything, but. Yeah. yeah, that's it's such a hassle to. It's so much easier just to mute the <laughs> the audio I, channel. I normally leave some some workshop noises in in my late in my last videos. Anyway, I do everything when I first started. I just muted everything because I didn't realize you could alter each um, track individually. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah start I, out with. I also sometimes do that. I go through the. Um, go through the video and where I do use an angle grinder or a drill where the spike in sound, I just, I cut close to that sound and I just adjust that down so that the sound level on all the other noises are relatively good but the once you start drilling and of course I always have the microphone on my cap so it's going to be very close so the, the audio really peaks but yeah, sometimes if you're do, <laughs> using the drill a lot, you spend a lot of time just cutting and adjusting sound level so I'm still yeah. waiting for that AI video editor to become good enough to just look at all my videos. That's what I want. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a function on your um, editing software to make shorts out of your long form videos for you? Mine, mine does, but I've not tried it yet. Like automatically? Or yeah. No. Uh, no. Well, I, I don't know. I haven't checked it. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Five percent of the functionality of <laughs> DaVinci Resolve at the moment, so I have no clue. Yes, same here. So probably yes, but uh, <laughs> I, I'll never find it. <laughs> uh, not on my own, no chance. I've not found a green screen function on mine yet. If I do, that is the day I'm getting a green screen. But that's be all over thing. that shit. I'm sure <laughs> you not... have it. Yeah, yeah, but th- that's the problem. It, it's not called a green screen or a blue screen or anything oh. is like something like a chroma key or it's some very specific oh, okay. term. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I just learned it from else. someone like, Oh, it's probably a chroma key or something like what spell that. Yeah. And then I Googled it. Oh yeah. Oh. That's a function. Why would they not just call it green screen function? Yeah, no. <laughs> because, yeah. I mean, that's it because it's the, the correct term is, because they're nerds that like the right thing, but yeah, I mean, just Google, <laughs> Google green screen and the whatever program you're using. Uh, okay. I'm sure they have some functionality of it. But that that would be great, and that is not in video editing software alone, but in a lot of instances. Do you, do you want the technical terms 
uh, if you're a like a, a, a stickler for details, then choose this version. Do you want the the one yeah. calling the hammer the bangy stick and so on? Like uh, <laughs> the things that regular people understand, that should be an option. Do you want to be correct or do you want people to understand you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, after it could prompt you in the beginning or, I mean, if you're going to use AI anyway, it should like, all right, he's doing this, he's doing that, all right. That means it doesn't need these functions. I can put those away and then, uh, yeah, I can put that function in the middle of the screen so you can easily find it. And uh, yeah, so it, it would automatically <laughs> tailor the software to what you need to use it for. Yes, suggested profiles with all the most used functions yeah. front and center. That would be good. Yes. I would have wanted to do it automatically, but present the options. Yes, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, when you get that far, I mean, it, it will also talk to you in a very comfortable, soothing voice. I mean, I see you're trying to, um, maybe you would rather do this and that. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Is Can you fix that? Yeah, I can fix that. All right, I'll have a beer then and uh, I'll uh, just sit here and <laughs> chat to you while you do the work. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this AI thing in video editing. <laughs> Just while we're talking about videos, I watched a video tonight, and it's one of the best videos I've Thank seen you. in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just about to say, and it wasn't yours, I'm afraid, KJ. No. Yours, yours, <laughs> yours, yours are always very unique and interesting to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you make it even worse here? Was, all your videos are quite an interesting and yeah, <laughs> unique unique <laughs> oh, uh, what you. else can I say about it uh, uh, anyway no, it was um, <laughs> it was Sam Sam's video from Gumtree Hill oh I haven't watched woodworking. it woodworking it is one of the nicest videos I've seen in a long time it's a very talky story one which isn't the kind of video I normally go for I normally like oh, we know. interesting ones <laughs> Um, but um, no, it's it's just a really lovely video. It's well worth a watch. I mean, it'll be a week old by the time this comes out, but uh, if you've not checked it out at that point, give it a watch. It's fantastic. Good to Good know. Film. Oh, have you been yawning enough? Can we go to, go to bed now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can uh, end the evening on uh, talking about uh, the yellow line I now have drawn between <laughs> Stockholm and somewhere around Glen. <laughs> And that line doesn't even cross Norway at all. It just snips the tip of Denmark. And uh, the center of that line is going to be in... Okay, it doesn't show. You know I'm quite a way down in the in England, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a, a cool little beach of Klim in Denmark. It's a nice a touristy beach. Oh, nice. That's not too bad. No, let's do that. And it's flat as well, isn't it, Denmark? So it'd just be like home for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would feel right at home. <laughs> well, it's going to be very specific. Bedford, Northampton, Luton, Cambridge, Birmingham, one and a half hour drive. That is probably there. Hey, KJ, how much is you? Well, I'm about to do whatever he's doing. How much does your train ticket cost to get to Norway? Roughly. Remember, I don't remember. Uh, not that much, but not cheap either. Yeah, the flight. Um, if you have no frills and I didn't have to pay for parking to Norway return, would be sixty-five quid. Hmm. I think that's cheap. Yeah, that's cheaper. <laughs> yeah. And I paid last year. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I've had to pay for car parking and I chose a seat with bigger seats. So it's actually come out 140 quid, but that's still cheap as far as I'm concerned to yeah. go to another country and get back again. Yeah, yeah. it's too then cheap again, to buy. Yeah. Just wait until you're going to book a hotel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I haven't stayed in a hotel in Oslo in quite a while. And just for shits and giggles last night, I just went into hotels.com and just zoomed into Oslo. And yeah. It's become quite more expensive, as they've said, after the pandemic. So, uh, right. Yeah. 
it's funny, I had a look uh, last year and there did seem some cheaper places, but it was really hard to distinguish whether they were hostels or hotels. I think the cheap ones were hostels. Yeah. yeah. I felt like that. And of course, what you need to... there, There is a... I mean, for being also centered, there, there are some hotels that are decent, but still in what is the budget range. And of course, you can go outside the city, but unless you have like a month subscription for the train. I mean, taking single journeys by the train is also quite expensive. Right. So if you're going to take the train back and forth to the hotel a couple of times a day for a couple of days, you could just use that and get a hotel yeah, in, yeah. in walking distance. How far is the um, the airport to the where I need to be? Oh, it's a it's a forty minute by train, so it's oh, okay. that's relatively quick. And of course, the the central station is the next door building to the the venue for Scarpet Festival, oh, and okay. so it is. Oh, cool. That's the nice thing about Scarpet Festival, and I mean, it is smack dead in the center of everything, and yeah, it's free. I said, bye, so. I said bye to everyone, and like five minutes later, I was on the train. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Do you want to do an outro, Havard, or end the recording? <sighs> not really. I've lost track of, I've not, I've lost track of time because we've got that other recording as well, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we are not behind schedule, but we're not ahead. But it's like the, the dreaded oh. realization that, all right, then it's bedtime and work again tomorrow. So, yeah. That's the... <laughs> <laughs> I've got a slow start tomorrow morning, actually, which is nice. Yeah. I have a short week. Yeah, and tomorrow is the last uh, because we our national day uh, is on Thursday. Oh, nice! And yeah. Friday the schools closed, and Monday the schools closed, so it's going to be a long weekend. Oh, lovely! So with that we call it a night. It's time to get back to our regular lives, our secondary personas, or is it pr- <laughs> primary personas? I mean, uh, the Clark Kent's of podcasting. Um... <laughs> So yeah, thank you for listening. Yes. Have a lovely week, and we'll see you again next time. Then with guests, so tune oh, in. Yeah. It's going to be nice, exciting. Yeah, very much. Bye. Good Bye. night. Bye.